Hello, this is Clint Halston. This is Introduction to Microprocessors. Now we're using the following textbook and we're currently on Chapter 5. We're on Section 5.8, More Assembler Directives. The include statement, equate, macros, and special instructions. So ta taming assembler complexity is the name of this section. A simple program can become complex. So we need a means to keep the program short. We look at three methods, include files, macros, special instructions, and then we talk about the list directive. Include files. The assembly directive include allows any files to be embedded within a program. This saves space. It saves the trouble of typing a list of equate constants at the beginning of each program for your special function registers. The problem is you have to know the exact name used to define them in order to use them. So let's look at how you use include files. Now if you look to the left hand of the screen, typically what we have been doing is notice in our code we type the special, the spe we specify our special function registers. We list a name like PCL, status, port A, port B. We type an equate statement and then we type a number. What that does is it allows us to, instead of typing 2, 3, 5, 5 each time for these register locations, we just type the register name. So we're using a, a constant text in sort of, in, instead of a, a number. Now if you, if you type, if you uh, add this include statement in your code, this text already exists. Now if you go to if you go to your C drive, program files, x86, microchip, MPLabX, MPASMX, you'll see this list of files that has a P16F84A include file. If you open that file, you can see that it already has these statements inside of it. You see PC equate to PCL here. You see the status register is 3. They're using hex, but it doesn't really matter. It's, it's the same uh, value. So port A, port B. So you can see, instead of typing this redundant each time, you don't actually have to do it. All you have to do is type the include statement, and then you just have to memorize the fact that the name of these files. But we've been using status port A, port B. So you don't, you don't actually need, you don't actually need to type this code out each time. All you have to do is, is add this include statement and then anytime you want to use port B or port or tris A here you can see that it's it's already going to be included here. It's already it's already in the file. So that's all you have to do. So that, that, that's the end of an include file. So now we're going to move on to macros. How can we use macros to make our lives a little bit easier here? We find program development for a RISC processor. Remember, RISC stands for Reduced Instruction Set. And that's what the PIC 16 series microcontrollers use, a RISC uh, processor. And we find that the development is, is uh, difficult. And one of the reasons is, is because you have only a few amount of instructions and the instructions are not really that powerful. I mean, if you combine them all together, you can get it, make it to do very powerful things. But you have to type uh, more lines of code than you would in a, in a higher level of language like C or something like that or assembly language for a complex instruction set processor. So how can we make programming in assembly easier? So, and, and the answer to that is, one answer to that is, is using macros. <clears throat> what is a macro? A macro is a grouping of instructions to defined by the programmer, given a name. Once defined, can be used in the program at any time. It's similar to a subroutine. By using the call statement you, is, is how you do subroutines, but it's more powerful because you can pass arguments to them. And we'll, we'll look and see what, what do we mean by the word arguments. So here's a, a macro example. And this is part of 
uh, programming exercise. This is example 5.11 in the book. And it all, it's also part of pr programming exercise 5.11. One comment though is some students ask the question, where is this code on the website? Well, it's not on the website. You have to type it out by hand. So it's going to be good for you to type this out by hand. And you can add it to the ping pong program to do this programming exercise 511. But let's look at this really quickly. <clears throat> the way a macro works is, remember these two lines are, are just comments, so these two lines in green don't do anything. Now what you're going to do is you're going to define a new command. We don't currently have a command called move literal to F. So if you look in your instruction set, you won't see that command. <clears throat> So what we're going to do is we want, this is going to be a new command, so we're defining a new command and then what we do is we type this name, so this will be the new name of our new command, we type the word macro and then we can pass it arguments. So this is the argument part of it. We talked about you can pass arguments. These are the, the arguments that we talked about. <clears throat> So you just type whatever you want. We want to call it constant and address. And then you type, then you have to list some commands that do exist. So this is a command that does not exist. These are commands that do currently exist. Move literal to W and move W to F. Now currently we've been using these commands a lot redundantly, repetitively. And so let's just create an instruction that just does both. Because currently in order to move a literal value into F, we have to first move that literal value into W. So for example, let's say we want to move 0, 8 into file register, a register called F, you know, which could be any address. Currently we don't have an instruction to directly do that. We ha actually have to move this 8 into the literal, into the W register by using move literal to W command and then we have to move that into F by using the move WF command. So we can make this new macro which will do it on one line. Now it'll equivalently, it'll use these two instructions when actually implemented in the code, but your code will look a lot simpler because it'll only have one line instead of two. So you define the macro by putting the label here, macro, putting your arguments, whatever you want, and then type your, your known commands that exist and that you've already learned and then so you're going to move literal to W and then this is the constant so you're passing it this argument whatever you put here in your macro you're going to pass it to this command and then you're going to the next known command or command that it does exist is going to be move W to F and then address and that's the argument that goes here and I'll show you an example of how to how to use that here in a minute but for right now we're just going to learn the, the theory of how they work <coughs> Okay, and there's some other examples which you can you can look here on the screen and kind of go over there, go over those examples as well. Notice that this macro is is a BFB set macro and it has a bit test F and then a go to, and you're passing three arguments to it, and then you have another one down here where you have three again three arguments you're passing and you have two commands that it, that are known commands that are exist. So these are three new macros that we're creating: one, two and then three. <clears throat> and then down here this is some example code of where we're actually using th these new macros. So this is this is number this is one of the new macros here. This is the the move literal to F command. Here's a new one and then these are the two new ones. So this is where you're actually using them and the way you use it is now you've already de you've defined the move literal to F that the first place is going to be a constant. You've defined it that way. So this is the constant, 0, 4. And so what happens is when you when it sees this command, move literal to F, it's going to take this 0, 4 and it's going to assign it to constant and then it's going to assign it to here. So 0, 4, essentially what you're going to get is 0, 4 is going to go into this value, 0, 4. Okay? And then for the address, it's going to it's going to become port A, whatever you've defined port A to be. Okay? So that's how it works. It passes these, when you use it in your code, it passes these arguments into your code. <clears throat> so that's how it works. And I'll give you a little bit of help on exercise 511. 
Okay, so how do you how do you how do you get started with doing exercise 511? I'll, I'll help you out on the first one. The example is to go ahead and type out the code from example 511 on page 133 of the textbook. So you type out uh, macro to move literal value to file. You put your semicolon. This should be green. You type in your label move the literal to F, and then you tab over. You type this exactly the oh, Sorry, you type this exactly the way it's written here, and then end M. So you start the macro by macro and then end macro, end, end, M. So you type that in, in the end, at the end of your, um, you, so you put this code inside the ping pong program. Okay, place the code at the end of the ping pong code. Then what you do, is you find the ping pong code where the macro code exists. So where is the macro code? The macro code is move literal to W and move W to F. So where do you find these commands inside the code? Well, at the very beginning, this is just an excerpt from the ping pong program. At the very beginning of the initialization, you see this, this command move W to F and, I'm sorry, move literal to W and move W to F. It's the same commands. So what you're going to do is you're going to replace this command, this section of the code with, which is the next line, replace with macro name. So the new code is going to look, so your new code is going to look like this. So you take, you basically, you, you delete these two lines of code here, since you already have them up here, and you replace this part of the code with this command. You can see that the rest of this code here, here, and here is the same. And the only difference is this is the same. Everything's the same about this code on the bottom except you have this new command and this is your macro. This is your new macro code. Okay? So that's it. So in your code you had um, let's, let's get rid of that. Okay. You had move literal to W, and then your constant was was this. So now we're going to put this value. We're going to put it right here at this location, and then you had move WF trist A. Now that's going to be your address. So that goes right here, and you have to separate it, of course, by a comma. Okay. So at the end, what you're left with. Let's clean this up a little bit. So what you're left with is right there. That's your code. Okay? Uh, All right. Let's keep moving along. So that's just a little bit of help for exercise 511. <clears throat> now we're going to talk a little bit about your special instructions. So microchip does give you some special instructions. This fur further eases the problem of limited instructions by defining these uh, special instructions. These are recognized by the assembler and expanded out to equivalent instructions. See MP ASM assembler MP link. Sorry, that's I misspelled that. This is link MP link object linker MP la live object libra library and user's guide document number DS. 33014K for more information. So you can Google that, go to uh, Microchip's website and type in this document number and you will be able to <coughs> find more information on special instructions. Here's, a, here's just a, uh, some of the special instructions. This is not an exhaustive list, this is just some of them. But for example, the this this mnemonic add c f f d add digit carry to file so this equivalent it's kind of like a macro but they're predefined I guess you could say this will implement the following two commands only in one line so it's simpler so branch on carry to k so a bit is is equivalent to bit test f skip of clear three comma zero so that the three just represents the status register, and the zero just represents the carry location. So, and then if that's if that's uh, 
<coughs> true, then, then it's going to skip. So it's going to branch on the carry. And then you have branch on no carry. <coughs> you have clear carry. So this is just a little bit easier to read. It's just more readable. It's still only one line of code, but it's just a little bit more readable, easier to read than, you know, this command. <coughs> and you have move F to W command, or you move a file to, to W again. That's just, again, this is not really simpler. It doesn't reduce your lines of code, but it just makes it easier to read. It makes more sense to, when you look at it. <coughs> You also have to subtract carry from file, so that reduces from one line into two lines. Again, the way this works is that the assembler, when it assembles it, it just replaces this code of this line with these two lines of code. So it's not really a, a special instruction. It's not really part of the instruction set of the code. It's just something that the assembler will recognize and it just does a replace replaces this text with this text. <clears throat> now finally, we'll talk a little bit about the the list directive. So the list directive is used to select which part you intend to use for the project. So which microcontroller part. So there's lots of different part numbers. So the Actually, probably a better way to say this would be to say which part number you intend to use for the project. <clears throat> this can also be done through the file project properties and then device command. Uh, the file project properties device command will always override the list command. So, just to give you an example, um, you can see this list command in this ping pong program and you can also see over here that I've got the PIC 16 f 84 part selected if you go to file project properties and then up here you can select the part well if I come over here and select the 16 f 87 and then you click OK that is going to override anything that I put here so a lot of times people include this just so when someone looks at your code they can tell what what part you intended to use. But just remember, it's, this is always going to override uh, whatever you put in your code. So that, that's a good thing to know. Okay, that is it for this lesson, and hope to see you for the next lesson. Thank you.